April 4, 2004. Um, well, that was 19 years ago. And so a lot of people say, why do you celebrate this day? And, uh, <laughs> you know, because uh, there's a lot of people that don't. And maybe, maybe there's people out there right now watching this going, what the hell was he talking about? Yeah, it was 19 years ago. Well, it was the Battle of Najaf in Iraq. And, um, you know, I think if you ask who doesn't celebrate it, well, there's, again, people that just don't know. There's people that don't care. There's people that um, may have even had involvement or uh, were actually a part of operations that don't want to ever talk about it again. And then there's the people, of course, that are trying to silence us about it. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I think this video is more about why, of ce why celebrating, right? So I, I think if we take a look at even the posts that we get of people when we, uh, the other day we put out a, a video from the battle footage that, that I personally took um, that actually Blackwater posted and uh, they were celebrating the anniversary coming up and there was a lot of, a lot of hate mail coming back at people saying like you guys are villains and this and that, you know, you're heroes and there was, you know, both sides and so I, and I get that. I get it when somebody says, hey, thank you for your service and you're a hero. Okay, I appreciate that. I get it. Um, you know, and then I also hear a lot of people saying, well, you're a villain. Well, I get it. So let's, let's talk about those two things a little bit more in depth so we have a better understanding. I think there was a lot of great examples, not just in that battle, but many battles um, where there was heroics. You know, there was men that were pulling out switchblade knives and stabbing insurgents because they were out of ammo. Uh, there was men that were running up and down flights of stairs all day long delivering water and ammo to other people that needed it, the gunfighters on, on, the, on the rooftops and on the ground. Um, there was medevacs that went against all odds. Um, there was men and women that got uh, bronze stars and silver stars for that day. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, and so I think, I think those are pretty pretty awesome things when you look back on it. And I have a, I used to have a problem with the word hero. Um, you know, somebody would say, oh, you're a hero. I'd say, you want to see a hero? Go stand in Arlington National Cemetery and look out amongst the trees. That's a hero. That's somebody that went all the way, right? That's, that's what I always truly believed. Um, but no, there's some guys that I've, I could say, looking back at that I've, I've fought with that were absolutely heroic. And, uh, and, I, and I love those brothers, and that's why I celebrate this day as well. Just like all the, all the battles that people have celebrated since, since we can look back in history, um, you know, I think it's, it's good to understand our history. It's good to see where we come from. It's good to see how we can do it better. And I've done those videos over the last, I guess, 19 years now, and you know, gotten a lot of love and a lot of hate from them, even from my own teammates. And so you have to ask, well, Let's look, let's look at the villain side of it. You know, oh, you're a mercenary. Well, first off, I think that's an extremely derogatory term as well as do most PMCs, private military contractors. Uh, I can tell you that I was a senior staff NCO in the United States Marine Corps while I was contracting. And I had contracted um, up until uh, a point where I was too busy with the Marine Corps Reserves and my own companies and decided to stop contracting and stick with the Marine Corps. And then get out and start my own business where a lot of people think guys jump ship from the military and go be a PMC and they just want to make money well I'll tell you that I don't I don't there wasn't a whole lot of guys over there that I personally met I know there are that were just in it from a monetary gain that would be more mercenary based because that's what the definition of a merc is is that you have no political considerations or no governing considerations no 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 um, you know you have no desire to really give a shit about the people that you're there to serve it's really only to make money and I'll tell you that if you are a merc on our teams you got murked very quickly and you were you were fired uh, mostly guys that, that we served with on the private military contracting side uh, most of the guys that I was with on my teams were still National Guard guys and reservists and so we still wore the big American flag you know um, and just because we couldn't you know, be a warrior full time for the U.S. military anymore. Uh, we did it on the weekends and had our jobs, our lives, our family. And we could make our own schedules and still fight for freedom. And I think that's where a lot of, a lot of guys would probably agree with that. So again, I, I think that's that's a good idea. You know, it's not a bad idea. Like a lot of people will will say and call us mercenaries. The other thing is, oh, you fought Dick Cheney's war. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, you fought for the military industrial complex, 9-11, uh, conspiracy, all these things. So if you are one of those conspiracy theorists and you think that it was Dick Cheney's war, Bush's war, um, to, to simply make money, you know, what they say Halliburton made 
$48 billion and took advantage of hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money. If you think that Al-Qaeda had nothing to do with Saddam Hussein's um, regime, if you think uh, that 9-11 was, was not tied to that whatsoever, and, and the list goes on and on and on, all the conspiracies out there, I believe you are absolutely, unequivocally, without a doubt, correct, in my opinion. Now, could that still be subjective? Uh, I think if you believe the government's batting a thousand, you're batshit crazy, or bat soup crazy, as we like to call it nowadays. So with that, how do you, how do you, how do you decipher through all that? Well, I think it's the puppet on the string, you know? We're all guilty, all of us in our life, are guilty of being a puppet at a certain point in time. Whether your parents were pulling the strings, whether it was teachers, whether it was politicians, whether it was uh, Secretary of Defense, whether it was these people trying to make money in politics around the world, the world's always been like that. We know it has. And it takes good men and women to step up with good moral and ethical code to fight back, to speak up about it like right now. And I think it's time. It's time for all of us to start speaking up, using our voice, not just our guns, right? Because we can get a lot more done with our voice than we can just pick it up again. That's why I always say think before you shoot, right? Be a thinker, not just a shooter. It actually means something. So, you know, you take these examples again of, of heroes and villains. They've always existed. You know, just look at, look at, the, look at comic books, look at, look at movies. They've always existed for a reason because it's the balance of opposites. And I think if we always have the good idea of having a good moral code, it'll always defeat the ones that have a bad idea uh, with no moral code. Um, you know, I don't want to get into uh, the conspiracies and everything else. Uh, I know a lot of people don't talk about the Battle of Najaf just like they don't talk about the Battle of Benghazi because a lot of people call Najaf, the guys on my team anyways have called it this, um, they've called it the Benghazi of Iraq. Well, that's interesting to me, and we'll never probably ever know all the facts, nor do I really care to know them all. Um, I'm, just, I'm just here to, to celebrate the heroics of men and women that were there that day. Unfortunately, one took their life 10 years later um, because of the stress of that incident, and, uh, and I feel horrible about that. But I still celebrate every one of those people and the people that we tried to help including the Iraqis that come up to us and, and tug on us and say, thank you so much for being here and liberating us from tyranny, right? To give us a taste of the freedom that you as Americans have. That's a thing. That actually happens. Every combat operation I've ever been on since I went to Somalia as an 18-year-old kid, uh, to the Balkans and Kosovo in the late 90s, to multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan and uh, in Africa, everybody has always come up to me and tugged on me and said, thank you. Okay, maybe I'm a puppet, but that felt pretty damn good as being a puppet. The people up above me that were pulling the strings and making money on it, shame on them. Um, so again, from a celebration standpoint, when people post things on the internet that mean something to them, uh, I think it's important to understand as much of the facts as, as possible. So I thought I'd just share a little bit of that today. And I know a lot of people say, would you do it again? Well, I think looking back, I'd start off by saying, first off, I think we're killing the wrong people. Yeah, that's what I'd say. It's time to get smarter. It's time to wake up. Our country needs community and self-reliance more than ever. That means not relying on anybody else except yourself. If you feel that there's something in your life that you're not self-reliant to, well, that's a clue. That's where you start. So again, I'm celebrating today and my brothers and sisters out there that have put foot to ask for our country for the right reasons, for the highest moral code possible. I love you people. And that's the people we need to step up right now and fight, continue to fight against tyranny, both foreign and domestic. I'm Travis Haley. Keep your blades sharp, as I always say. And stay safe and die free.